Hi, FST friends. Let's take a look at what we're looking at today. We're uh, done with sine and cosine graphing, and so we're moving on to the fundamental trigonometric identities. Now, um, I want to point out that I sent to you all um, a guided note sheet to help you just kind of keep these things organized, so please feel free to use it. Okay, and so here we go. So let me start with the reciprocal identity. So get these down. Like I said, you can use that guided note sheet. You can print it and then fill it out as I go. Um, or you can have it in Notability, pause this, and then go back and forth, okay? But there are six reciprocal identities, which hopefully you'll recall a couple of them from Algebra 2, that the sine is 1 over the cosecant, okay? The sine and the cosecant are reciprocals. Okay, that the cosine is the reciprocal of the secant, okay, and that the tangent is the reciprocal of the cotangent, okay, and then it's all of those but flipped over. So you could also say that the cosecant is 1 over the sine. You could say that the secant is 1 over the cosine. And then, of course, lastly, you could say that the cotangent is 1 over the tangent, okay? So be sure you get those down because the name of the game today is all about substituting. So anywhere you see a sign, you could replace it with a 1 over uh, a cosecant. Okay, as far as the tangent and cotangent identities, we have just two, that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So here again, I just want you to notice tangent could be 1 over cotangent, but tangent could also be sine over cosine, okay? And then the cotangent is the cosine over the sine, okay? And then we move on next to our Pythagorean identities. There are three, okay? So the first one is the most common one, that the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta is 1, okay, that's the main one, okay. The next one is 1 plus the tangent squared of theta is equivalent to the secant squared of theta, okay, so be sure you get that down. And then the last one is that the cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equivalent to the cosecant squared of theta, okay, so there's three of them. Okay, so be sure you get those down. Okay, lastly, we have our negative angle identities. Okay, and so the sine of any negative angle will always be equal to negative sine. Okay, we have that the cosine of any angle that's negative will simply just equal the positive cosine. Okay, and then um, the tangent of any negative angle will equal the negative of the tangent. Okay, so let's come on over here and let's do a couple of examples. Okay, so get this down. I think I put this on your um, little guided note sheet. But we want to take this expression and rewrite the whole thing in terms of one function or just simplify it down just so that, it, that it's one thing, okay? And so a common thing that I often, um, I think, works on a lot of these is to get anywhere that you see something that is not a sine or a cosine, make it so that it is, okay? And so right here I see a sine, I see a cosine, but I don't see a sine or a cosine here. But I do know, because of my tangent and cotangent identities, that we could substitute, we could replace tangent with sine over cosine. Okay, and if you're like, wait, you could replace tangent with this though too, and yeah, I could, but like I said, a common thing that I notice when I do these is that rewriting things in terms of sine and cosine is usually a good way to go. So let's replace the tangent with sine over cosine. Okay, and then let's do the same thing with the cotangent. So. Um, let's use this one. We could, like I said, we could use this one, but I think this is going to be more helpful. Let's replace cotangent with cosine over sine. Okay, and then now I'm just going to bring this down. 
Okay, now I'm going to do a distribution of this whole thing, the sine times the cosine over 1. I'm going to distribute it to both terms here, okay? And so when we do that, um, do you see how we're going to have a cosine up here and a cosine down there? Like those are going to cancel, right? And that's going to leave us with a sine times another sine, which we can write sine squared, okay? And then plus, okay, if we distribute here, we're going to do the sine times the cosine and then times this. We have a sine up in the numerator and a sine in the denominator, so those will cancel, leaving us with just a cosine times another cosine, which is a cosine squared, okay? So notice, just to recap before I do the last step here, we, we want to use all of these identities to make substitutions, okay? So we made a substitution here, we made a substitution here, we did a little distribution, and now we're to this point. So here's where I want you to just take a look at those Pythagorean identities. I think there's one more step we can take. Remember the first one, that if you have a sine squared plus a cosine squared, that's equal to 1. Well, then that means this we could replace all with a one, okay? And that's our final answer here. All this big mess right here in the top is all actually just equivalent to a one, okay? All right, so let's move on to the we problem. Okay, now, when you prove an identity, okay, and you have, see how you have an equation here? It's like, it's telling you what the answer already is. You just have to show all your work and get to it, okay? So basically what they're telling us on this is that this whole left side right here, you can simplify it all down so that it's just that, okay? And so again, here again, I wanna just um, remind you like a good rule of thumb with these, just a thing that I've noticed after doing hundreds of these is that rewriting things in terms of sine and cosine is often a good way to do these, okay? And so I'm gonna start with that. So for the secant, um, let's see, I'm going to replace that with a 1 over a cosine. So it's all about substitutions, right? Okay, for the tangent, I could go here, but again, I think I'm going to use this one instead. Okay, so I'm going to replace the tangent with a sine over a cosine. Okay, and then here I have a sine already. So again, everything in terms of sines and cosines, so I'm just going to leave it. I am just going to rewrite it though, so it's the sine of theta over one. Okay, and so now what we have here is we have a one over a cosine minus, we have a sine times another sine, that means we have two of them. We have a sine squared over a cosine. Okay, and then now can you see in these two fractions that the denominator is the same, right? Same denominator, that means we can combine the two into one fraction. So this is one minus sine squared theta all over cosine, okay? And then this is just a little bit tricky. I wanna just come back to the identities here. Look at the top. You have a one minus sine squared theta, okay? So just check this out because this is a legal move and it's kind of a little bit strange, okay? Remember this identity that said sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, okay? Do you see how there's a one and a minus sine squared? And then this identity has a one and a sine squared in it. And do you see how if you just were to take the identity as it is and subtract the sine squared from both sides, do you agree with me that you'll get that cosine squared is equivalent to one minus sine squared theta? Like you can take any of these and like move them around, okay, to get to what you want. So check this out, one minus sine squared theta is actually equivalent to a cosine squared theta. And that's what we have in the top. We have one minus sine squared theta. That means we can replace the top with cosine squared theta over a cosine. Okay, let me angle this down a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna rewrite that here. So now we have cosine squared theta over a cosine. And remember, cosine squared theta means that you have two cosine thetas. It means that there's two of them, right? Okay, and so if you have one on the top and one on the bottom, one can cancel with one, leaving us with just one cosine. And remember, check out what we are trying to prove, okay? And so this checks out with this, and so we're good. We've proved it.
okay? So you have to do a bunch of work, make a bunch of substitutions to show that the left side is in fact the same as the right side, okay? All right, so let's take a look over here, last problem, okay? What you want to do is to write this, okay? 1 over cosine theta plus cotangent theta. Write this so that it's one fraction somehow. Okay, so I think you're going to want to work, get a common denominator. Go ahead and pause this right now. Give it a shot, okay? And when you're done, I think you should be getting... Ooh, that's hard to see. Wrote that a little small. I think you should be getting sine theta plus cosine squared theta is all over cosine theta sine theta, okay? And now it's all just one fraction. Alrighty, so have a great day, everyone. Okay, keep practicing those identities. All right.